Good morning, friends, and welcome back to the kitchen. This morning, I'm going to be canning beef, and so I thought I would bring y'all along to show you how I do it. One of our stores uh, where I shop for the sales that they have had eye of ram for $1.97. Now, I've had to trim the fat off, but it's just big old pieces of lean meat, and I'm going to can it in quart jars in the pressure canner. So I'm going to uh, show y'all what I'm doing. I've washed in hot soapy water my jars, and that's all you have to do if it's going to pressure. First, like you want to be does. sure that your hands are clean and um, you don't contaminate anything. But I'm just I'm just cutting the meat in chunks and packing it in my jars. I'll use this for beef tips and rice and for soup and I'll use it for like barbecue sandwiches because it's completely done. All I'll have to do is just open it up and season it with whatever I'm going to make with it. And um, you pack it in here raw with no liquid. It makes its own juice while it pressures. If you wanted to put some kind of flavoring in it, onion soup mix, you know, for a liquid, you could. But I don't ever do that. I just pack it raw and then I season it, brown gravy or whatever I want to make out of it when I get ready to use it. Trim as much of the fat off as you can because fat sometimes can go rancid. You, uh, the first time I canned meat, I actually canned deer meat like this because Troy back then was hunting and uh, I wanted to preserve it. And we could come in from church on Sunday and open up a can of that deer meat, add some barbecue sauce to it, and have delicious sandwiches or make chili or whatever out of it. Once you get it canned, there's just a lot, it's a lot easier to prepare a quick meal. But I'm just going to get my knife up under that fat and trim it off and I got a little bit of lean in there but not much now because these jars are not hot I'm gonna uh, put them in and let the water slowly heat in my cooker and let them heat with it and then I'll it'll take a little bit longer but I don't want thermal shock on my jars so I may turn it on a little bit ahead of time to start heating, but I don't want it real hot because I don't want it to hurt my jars. When I was growing up, my mom did not can like I do. She had to can in her childhood. There were six girls in her family, and they all, of course, had to help Grandma. So Mama said she'd done all that she wanted to do. But I've always liked anything old-fashioned, the old ways, and so when I married, I started canning. And like y'all know, we were married 50 years, June the 6th. So you wanna, you're gonna want an inch of headspace in your jars. I've got my jars all filled. And uh, I had to do one with pulled pork. And I'll show y'all that. I'm going to get my salt in, each one of them. And I'm doing a teaspoon of salt because these are quarts. And I'm using the pickling and canning salt because it's pure salt. You don't want to use something with fillers in it like your ordinary table salt. I put some beef bouillon in my jar of pulled pork. And I got my debubbler and I went down in there and I got all the air out. If you're not a canner or if you're new to canning, a lot of the supplies that we've always just took for granted are hard to find. Okay, I'm going to get my lids on. 
and I've got 14 quarts. That'll be two cookers. To put your rings on, you just fingertip tight. You don't want to crank down on them. And then after the canning's over and they've set overnight, you take your rings off, wash your jars with soapy water, and then they're ready to put in the pantry and store until you're ready to use them. It's, this is just big old pretty jars of lean meat. I've got my jars in both canners, and I've already put the lid on this one, and I'm fixing to put this lid over here on the other one, and uh, that way it'll heat on up and get started. I have the canners both to heat my burners on high till they reach temperature, but a little bit of steam is coming out the one on the left. And uh, it has to be a full spew of steam, and then it has to do that for 10 minutes. That gets the air out of the canner, most of it, and it'll keep you from having failed canning sessions. So that's very important. You have to let it uh, vent for 10 minutes. And then we put the weight on and let the pressure build up, and I go to 11 pounds, and keep it there on quartz for 90 minutes. So we'll be back when there's something else changed. I have a steady stream of steam on both cookers, so I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. Okay, I've got the weights on both of my canners, and I'm just letting the pressure build up to about 11 pounds, and I'm going to try to keep it steady at 11 for 90 minutes. And you have to babysit these because you have to keep the pressure at least 10 pounds. If it goes under 10 pounds, you have to start your time all over again. So it's really worth it to babysit them and get it done in an hour and a half instead of having to start over. The reason being, at 10 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes, the, in, the interior of your jars, the products that you're canning, reach a temperature that will kill the bacteria. And it has to be at that temperature for 90 minutes. It's a proven method. So. Don't take any chances. Make sure that you watch your gauge and keep it going for 90 minutes at 10 pounds. Well, this first one right here that I'm zooming in on is the pulled pork. And then I have all of my other 13, uh, that's the, the beef. And see how it made its own broth? It's still bubbling away. This one had a little bit less in it, so it's not all the way up to the top. But they, uh, it's just, so pretty. Okay, y'all, that concludes the canning, the roast beef, and the one jar of the pulled pork. I had thought I would do a canning session on the pulled pork, but we've eaten a couple of meals off of it, and I don't have enough for a canner, so I'm probably just going to freeze it until we get ready to make us some more sandwiches. I'm tired today. I have been I've been a busy red hen. Y'all will see several things that I'm doing today, um, so I'll get ahead a little bit, because you never know what's going to happen. Somebody might get sick or something, and I'll be glad that I have a video or two ahead that I don't have to worry about y'all thinking I ran off and forsook you. Thank you for watching. I hope it's helped somebody with their uh, starting to can or already canning or if you like me I just like to watch people can I like it's it's satisfying it's so good to put your own food up and have it in your pantry and you know how it was processed and that everything was clean and it just gives you a sense of accomplishment if you hadn't tried it you ought to try canning it's just a great hobby way of life for sustaining you and your family in hard times. One time my daughter-in-law had canned a lot just to get the pantry stocked, uh, just in case if something happened. Well, something happened. My son was a welder in the oil field at that time, and it'll just go down overnight and there's no work. And they lived grocery-wise on what she had canned. So it's wise to put a little extra food back can you some stuff or pick up some extra stuff at the store that you know you're going to need. Always have extra essentials. And have a few extra that's just pleasure, just good stuff. 
Because you know what? In the worst of a situation, if you can get your chocolate candy bar, that makes it better. Or a glass of sweet tea. Think ahead of the things you enjoy the most. And try to have a few tucked back for a just-in-case situation. The good Lord bless y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I hit that little bell if you haven't so you'll know when I upload another video. And hit the like button if you like what you saw. I like it when I go look and I've got so many likes that's been hit. That makes me happy. feel like I'm doing something right. Y'all come back in a day or two. We'll have something else good. The good Lord bless and keep you. Take care of yourself. Stay cool if you're where it's hot. And warm if you're where it's cold. Be good to yourself and everybody around you. I'll see you in a day or two.